Hello and welcome to another edition of Quick News TV. We're excited to have Dr. Josh Chastain and David Liss here to talk to us a little bit more about the Connected Initiative that we're implementing this year. Now, this all kind of started last school year. We're building up to it. And I guess the big thing was the passage of the April 2016 bond issue, and that kind of led us to the path we're on today. But just to recap, can, Josh, why don't you just tell me a little bit about what is Connected? Connected is a four-year plan that supports instruction in the classroom, and it also takes what we know about good instruction and intertwines technology, which we know is the future uh, learning for our students and what they will be working with as they continue to lead their lives uh, past high school. And we're excited to be able to put that together in a plan that will support their learning. Great, and, and Dave, I know everyone thinks that it's just gonna be about handing the students devices and that's all they're gonna mm -hmm. be on. What is that gonna maybe look like a little bit in the classroom? Um, in the classroom, Zach, there, it's not to be expected that they're gonna be on the machines all the time. It really is to support learning. And so where it is appropriate, they'll be using it, and where it's not appropriate, they won't be using it. Great, and Josh, I know that we've, we've had a lot of discussions about what like screen time and what's appropriate for different age levels. Have we taken that into account in the classrooms? We absolutely have, and we've also taken a look at what type of technology works best with those kids. So our teachers know that even with our youngest years, we need that touch type of device, but we also know that there's a lot of other things that needs to happen besides using a device. So in our kindergarten and first grade years, there's a lot of rules yeah. and, and routines and things that we go through, and, and a lot of that reading still works within the books, uh, but we recognize that there are certain times where those devices need to come into play, and as our students get a little bit older, there will be a lot more of that usage time, but it will be done uh, as a support and a resource tool for those teachers in the classroom. Great. And, and Dave, that's ultimately why we, the district went with the device that the committee recommended was because of those multiple functions that need to happen and we really want to try to find that in one device. Absolutely, and we're wanting to, uh, we're wanting to tap into higher level learning. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's things that devices will allow us to do in the classroom that not having devices or connectivity wouldn't allow us to do it. So we're able to implement different types of teaching strategies, not only to make things more differentiated for individual students, but also to take it to a higher level of learning as well. That's awesome. And so I guess the ultimate question is, when are we getting the devices? So uh, what's the rollout gonna look like um, for, I know each school has its own uh, set date, and those are gonna be on the screen uh, right now, but um, we're gonna have a set date. So what is that gonna look like? Well, we're very excited to start our rollout August 29th, and that first date will take care of all of our 7th and 8th grade students at the junior high. And as we look at the rest of that, we want to be able to deploy to the rest of the district within a week's time frame. Now, we will go into the following week with Matthews, but other than that, we will have all of our uh, devices rolled out within a week. That's great. So every, everybody can start to see those around the community. Uh, parents can start expecting students to bring those home. In fact, who is going to be able to bring those devices home, Dave? Uh, it'll be second grade through 12th. Kindergarten and first grade will remain in the schools and second grade through 12th grade will be able to take them home. Great, and I, I know this question comes up a lot. It's probably those simple things, but it's <laughs> some, a big deal. Are students gonna be able to personalize their devices with like stickers and all that kind of stuff? Well, knowing that it is district property, it is one thing that we wanna make sure that we manage the resources of our uh, district. And so we do not allow devices to be stickered or written on or anything, but we do have options that allow them to personalize it. So uh, we have vendors around the area and different businesses that will, uh, you can get a device sleeve, which is a neoprene piece for that device to go into to protect it in the backpack. And we also uh, know that there are device hard shell covers that can go on them that can be purchased where you can write on them or put stickers on or something that can personalize it for each individual student. And we're gonna list all those vendors at connectednixa.net, correct? Absolutely, we're gonna make sure that we do that and we uh, know that uh, businesses are excited to be able to support our students and families. Well, Dave, what can we expect with the Wi-Fi piece? Um, that's been a big concern about access to Wi-Fi. So what is the district gonna be doing to help uh, address that? We've spent all summer and a, a lot of resources to get Wi-Fi ready for all 6,000 of these devices to be uh, attached. And so we've built that backbone uh, to the point that it should sustain all of those devices. We did have what's called coverage mm -hmm. in our buildings to where 
as you would think, like your cell phone, sometimes you show bars, but you're not able to get data or something <laughs> like that. And that's the difference between coverage and density. Okay. And so we had coverage, but not so much density. And so what we've done is we have literally put one access point per classroom increasing uh, and maximizing our density so that all students should have an absolutely wonderful experience uh, in, in connecting to Wi-Fi. Great. And Josh, I know you've been working with trying to get the community a part of this as well. So what can we expect for the community as far as getting, making sure our students stay connected outside of school? Well, it's important for us uh, to make sure in our planning that we recognize that not everybody has Wi-Fi. And so when they take their devices home, we want to make sure that as a community we're working to support Wi-Fi access. And we have businesses that are ready to sign up. They're ready to, to be a support for our families. And we will have Wi-Fi uh, friendly stickers that will be on businesses that are supportive of allowing families and students to come in and use their Wi-Fi. Our first uh, partnership has been through the fire department stations and we're really excited to get started there and also at connectednixa.net we will have a map of the community where we have businesses that are Wi-Fi friendly. So is the purpose of, um, of the Wi-Fi just to make sure everybody stays connected? Um, are we trying to provide it just for people that don't have it at home? Like what's the ultimate purpose uh, uh, behind that, that Wi-Fi connectivity across the entire community? Right. Well, the reality is, is that many times we think of not having broadband access as being tied to whether you can financially afford it. But there's multiple different, I mean, you might not be able to afford it, but you might also live in an area that doesn't have broadband access. Uh, the other things that I think of is that you may be, at any given time, we may be somewhere where we want to do our homework or, or uh, come together and work on a, on a project together, but we just don't have access in that space. And so by having Wi-Fi available in the community, mm -hmm. it'll allow kids to come together uh, anywhere from a coffee shop to a business or whatever, work together on those things just because they don't happen to have that Wi-Fi in that area at that specific time. Now we'll be able to provide that. And that's great. And we're really excited to partner with our community just to, to bring, um, I guess, more information to students and give them that place outside of school to, to stay connected. Well, I know a big question that people have been having is, what's up with the insurance? Uh, we've gone back <laughs> and forth on, is it required? Is it not required? It is optional. And so what can uh, parents expect from that? It's important, and, and I wanna make sure that we go over this, but it's not an insurance plan. It's a okay. device waiver plan. And, and that's what we will be calling it throughout the district. But it is support in case we do have accidental breakage uh, of our devices. And so we are calling it our one-to-one -one, uh, device damage waiver because we do have a business partnership that is going to be supporting that for our district. It is optional, and it's important to know it's just for second through 12th graders, those ones that are taking it home. And with that optional piece, they have the ability to sign up and uh, take advantage of a great uh, rate for them to be able to fix their devices uh, if there are any accidental breakages or any other things that might happen to it that's out of the realm of just common um, problems that a device might have. Great. And we're sending information home through email. So if parents, if you don't get that email, make sure you contact your child's school and we'll make sure you get that information. We're also sending home a flyer, so watch for that too. Um, it'll be out on Peach Jar through an email and also physically in the student's hands. So we'll be watching for all that information because we'll make sure that we, uh, we get that out in multiple ways because we know not everything makes it home all the time. And you know, Zach, another thing that's really important to note is that uh, when you go on to one-to-one -one risk, if you want to be able to do that optional device damage waiver, you have the option of a debit card or a credit card or an online check. Now, if you only have cash and you want to be able to do that, we will have prepaid cards at all of our buildings and parents can pay for it there and take that prepaid card and use it just like a debit card to purchase their one-to-one -one risk. Great. Well, you know, with all this thing, all these things going on in the district, one thing I've noticed is the new collaboration spaces. So, so Dave, how does that tie into the whole connected mindset? The collaboration spaces are really to get to that higher level of learning like we were talking about. Um, traditional seats and rows uh, just don't allow children to collaborate together. And so we need to be able to provide spaces that are very mobile and that can be set up in many different ways because sometimes two people need to collaborate, sometimes six people need to collaborate. And so part of those 
uh, future ready skills are communication and collaboration, being able to work well with others and critical, critical thinking, those types of things. And that's done well in teams. And so we have spaces now that are, um, are flexible so that we can, we have seating that's flexible, we have whiteboards that are flexible, uh, tables that are flexible so they can be set up in multiple different arrangements. You can only imagine the chaos that would ensue if we did that with non-mobile furniture. And so we have mobile furniture and uh, it really allows just an open, flexible environment for children to uh, learn in and to be able to participate in their learning. Oh, and that's great. And Josh, I know that a lot of these things are because this is what employers and, and the different um, you know, community members out there are saying they need in their future employees. And so we're trying to do that now so that when they enter the workforce, they're ready to go. Absolutely, and we've done that at all of our K-8 buildings. And our high school has already worked with that in a lot of their rooms as well as the library. But as Dave was saying, the learning drives the setup of the, the classroom and not the classroom um, predicting what's going to happen with the learning. And so it's a great way for teachers to come in, utilize the space, but allow kids to know that classrooms aren't always that I always have to sit here. Or we're always sitting at a table. It's flexible and it is there for their learning and not necessarily what we remember as our learning. <laughs> yeah, and I think that, that really sums up kind of the whole idea behind the connected piece. It's, it's the devices and the learning spaces and, and everything is a part of reaching students where they are and getting them ready for those future ready skills and those jobs that don't even exist yet <laughs> that, I mean, I can only imagine what 50 years from now the jobs are gonna be like. So we're really excited. I can't even imagine what they're going to be like in four years. <laughs> I, know, I know. So it'll, it'll be a lot of fun just to see um, everything change around the district and us really kind of take that step forward as a community. So we want to thank you all for joining us today on another edition of Quick News TV. Make sure you check out Get Connected Nixa for information ongoing throughout the rest of the school year. We'll make sure we communicate you, with you often so you're informed on everything going on with the Connected Initiative.